Like a lot of us just want to be able to like step into a role, whether that's being the director or the producer or the writer or the actor. A lot of us want to step into a role and just wear one hat, but we don't all have the privilege to do that. I would literally just employ all of my friends and like people who I really admire and respect and have wanted to work with. And you know how you meet people and you're just like, oh my God, I want to do things and I want to create with you. Yeah. to the Hollywood Dream Podcast, a podcast about the journey to reaching the Hollywood Dream, whatever that might be to you. In today's episode, I'm chatting with Michelle Martinez. Michelle is an award-winning filmmaker, a writer, an amazing human being, and she's one of my favorite people to collaborate with and just be around because she's so positive and so talented. So we're going to go back in time to a few days ago when I chatted with her. Uh, when I first did her intro, I forgot to press record on the mic. So what I had was just uh, a video of me moving my mouth because there was no sound. So we're going to go back in time and talk to my dear friend, Michelle Martinez. Okay, it's recording. Okay, we're live. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Johanny. Hey, here we are. Here we are in this podcast studio. How are you? I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm happy. Am I still yelling <laughs> in your ear? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just felt awkward, but it's all good. It's all um, good. So, Michelle's one of my favorite people in the world. We've made a movie together. We did. We And we went to a bunch of film festivals together. And we met at a film festival that... Neither one of us was happy about. <laughs> Wait, were, yeah, were you... there was like ups and downs about that one. Yeah, yeah but, but the, that's the what film festivals thing... are for. I feel like the best thing about film festivals for me, like I love seeing my project like live in front of an audience and I love doing Q and A's, but I feel like one of the most exciting parts for me is like meeting the other filmmakers and yeah. especially like the ones that are screening stuff. And like right after you watch a project that you like, you get to meet the people who made it. I love that. So. And that's exactly that's what that's what I did when I when I that's how I met you because I saw the third wheel and that that movie was making everybody in the audience crack up and then after I was like hi I loved your movie <laughs> remember I yeah and I missed and your movie was coming up after my screening and I couldn't see yeah it, and I felt bad it's alright it's alright uh, but I watched it at a different festival that we were both in right. The oh, it was that official Latino? Official Latino. We like official Latino. We're not going to mention the other one, but <laughs> <laughs> official Latino was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're starting out in your big Hollywood journey. How's that, how's that going? Um, You know, I mean, it has its ups and downs. That's funny because like, I never even thought of it as like, a, a Hollywood journey, but when you think about it, it is. like mm -hmm. That's like, a, I guess, the center of the industry. Yeah, um, but you know, I don't know. It just has its ups and downs. I feel like so much of who I am is because of like my dream chasing and like like the ups and downs. Just the road has made me who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like uh, there's a lot like. I'm in my like late twenties now, so I feel like a lot of like being an actor and being a filmmaker has taught me more about life than it has about like it's it's about it's about so much more than just um, being successful in the industry and like where where it's gonna get you in the industry. I feel like you just kind of change as your, as a person. Yeah. Once you are, um, I don't want to say chasing, but like yeah, just like chasing a specific goal or yeah, you're chasing your aspiration too. Yeah, if that, I hope that made sense because. No, I, I agree because I feel like I've grown more as an individual because I'm I moved to New York and I started pursuing this dream. You know, at first it was to be an actor, but now you know the dream has shifted. But like the pursuit is kind of the same. I feel like, mm -hmm. and I think that's how I've grown as a person. Whereas if I stayed in my hometown, just like 
working a regular job and like, you know, doing stuff that normal people do, which is fine. It's just, I feel like I wouldn't have grown as much as I have. Exactly. Like just leaving your home because you wanted to come to this industry, but that whole act of leaving your home, it kind of, it's character building. That's how I feel about so much, so much that we do just because, for example, like something that changed me a lot was being in acting classes because like, yeah, I'm growing as an actor while I'm there, but I'm also growing as a person because I'm being an actor forces you to have confidence, like more confidence and just like that you probably would have if you're just like navigating the world in a career that doesn't force you to self-reflect so much and be so self-aware. Um, and I, yeah, I think the actors are like way more self-aware than we should be, but that's, you have to be like that in order to be good at the craft. So I know. Yeah, I think so much uh, of, taking yeah. acting classes to help me kind of get over like stage fright and just kind of talking in front of people. So do yeah. you if anyone has um, self-conscious <laughs> about that, take an acting class. It'll help. Or an improv class. Yeah. Oh my God. I hate yeah. that. Improv was is scary. Class? It was so much fun. It was scary. Um, but then I kept telling myself, like, it's not a big deal. <laughs> like, like, the worst thing that could happen is, like, you know, that people don't find you funny or whatever. Yeah. I don't even know. But, for example, okay, so, like, it was my improv class. It was like a seven week class. And then at the end we had a graduation show. And like, as a, I was having fun in the classes, but the whole time I had this underlying anxiety, like there's a show at the end of this, like I have to be growing in each class because the mm -hmm. show is just getting closer and closer. So like, I was having like, anxiety about that. And then I thought about, it, I'm like, okay, so we're doing a graduation show and guess who's going to be there. It's just going to be our friends and family and people who yeah. love us. You know, this isn't like some huge Broadway performance where a bunch of critics are going to come and write an article about it with your name in it if they don't like it, you know? So that, yeah, like that, that improv show was fun and it forced me to be brave and it was cool. It was cool because I thought I was going to be so scared, but when the day of the show came, I just had so much fun and I didn't even, I wasn't even nervous when I got on stage. Like I thought I would be nervous and that I would feel the heat of the lights, but that wasn't at all oh, what good. happened. I was just having a great time with my classmates and... I was uh, the complete opposite. I took Improv 101 and I skipped the final performance. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, we did have somebody skip. We had we had someone drop out after the first class, and then we also had somebody skip the show. But I don't think it's because they were nervous. I don't know why they no, skipped I skipped it, the but... show because I, I, wasn't, I didn't feel like I was good at improv. I, I just hated it. it I would think cool, of though. stuff to yeah. say, like, afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah, that happens to everybody. Like you always think even if even like not just with improv but any performance, you're always thinking of how you could have done it better. And I don't know. I catch myself doing that and once I catch myself doing it, I tell myself to stop. But it makes me feel better that I know it's it's not just me, it's everybody. Like after I like in my acting classes I, t I talk to my classmates about class sometimes and they're like yeah every time I leave I just think or every time I finish my scene I think oh I should have done this I could have done that but us as like who are not in their heads us watching it are like you didn't need to do anything different like that was amazing <laughs> that was yeah. so good. but we're like always our own worst critic and so every time I catch myself like after an improv class or an acting class being like okay well um, I could have handled this better or what, or, like, you just have all these ideas and that's just your creativity flowing and just try to like, let it go and not relive it too much in your head because you did the best that you could in that moment. So, yeah, I agree. So what is your ultimate Hollywood dream? Um, for me, the dream is to have creative freedom and the abundance to create the projects that I, you know, you have this great idea mm -hmm. and I would love to be able to not think of all the limitations all the time that come first. Yeah. Or, you know, to just like, if you write a script then it's like, you have to go through all these permissions in order to get it produced. Like think about how many scripts get written and just like never come to life just because there aren't, I don't know, maybe there aren't like the resources or whatever to make that happen. But I would love to just have an idea write it down and not worry about like, oh, now I'm going to have to pitch this. And, mm. or even if I want to produce it myself, it's like, oh, now I'm going to have to fundraise. Yeah. I don't know. But basically I just want to have, um, 
a support system and just like a network of people that I like to work with and people who support my stories and my creations so that when I have ideas, I can create them. And not, not every idea is meant to come to life, I think, but still like the ideas that you really love to have that abundance to bring them to life and to give jobs to your friends who I also know. love doing this stuff. Um, so that's a dream for me as a, as a writer, as a director and as an actor, just to be able to do the things that I love and not worry so much about money and all the Which obstacles are- that it will take to make them happen. I know. Which one are you first? Are you a director first? I feel like would, you've told me this before, but yeah, I asked that. I feel like my, no, yeah, I feel like my answer changes sometimes. Um, I think if you, I think last year I was telling people, oh, I just love acting more than anything. And now I'm writing again and I'm like, oh, I just love writing. <laughs> but I think that I feel like I'm a storyteller yeah. and maybe down the line, I think that directing or writing directing together is what i'm going to be doing for longer Mm -hmm. um and i i love acting but i i've only been i haven't been doing it as long as i've been doing the other two so i think just being a filmmaker is what i love doing like telling stories and there's like different um what's it called there's just different ways to tell a story like you can do like a documentary could do a short film a feature but either way i think that's just something i'm always going to be doing is making content whether it's like short form or long form i just love just having an idea and then seeing the final product or just getting there to the final product and i know i'm just saying sometimes i like editing sometimes i don't, I don't know. editing <laughs> is so so hard it's not hard it's just like time consuming yeah it can be really tedious but sometimes I'm in the middle of an edit and it's just so much power that you have and so much decision making. Because you sometimes edit your own films, right? Yeah, I've edited every single one of my films. I've You're myself. like just a whole a Hollywood studio in one person. I know, I'm just one <laughs> a studio in one. Like they have those one woman shows. I'm just a one woman production. That's what you need to be nowadays. You really do, honestly. It's kind of exhausting because all of it, all of us, especially people who love acting and being behind the camera, um, we want someone to write us a role that we can play. Mm-hmm. We don't want to have to write it ourselves. Like a lot of us, just want to be able to like step into a role, whether that's being the director or the producer or the writer or the actor. A lot of us want to step into a role and just wear one hat, but we don't have the privilege to do that. So a lot of yeah. times, especially if you're just starting out, you're gonna be the producer and the director and the PA and the editor and the writer and the just costume department. You're just like, and costumes, you're everything. Crafty, you're doing you're, everything. Yeah. You do everything. And then like that causes oversight sometimes. Like when you're on set, you just want to focus on directing, but you also have to be like, oh, what time is it? Make sure <laughs> like lunch is coming for everybody. So it's a lot, but. Once you do that, you can do anything. Like once you do low budget filmmaking, you can't do anything in, in the industry, I think. That is so true. And you just need to find someone that believes in you as much as you believe in yourself, which sometimes is hard to do. Yeah. Uh, so have you always wanted to be a director, writer? Uh, is this something that you always want to pursue as a kid or that just, what was that moment that made you be like, you know what, I'm going to be I'm going to make movies. I always liked, I, okay, I think I started out writing, but I also had a camera when I was a kid. Cause my, you know how like every dad has like the camera that they record all mm-hmm. the family memories on. So he passed it down to me when I was like eight or nine years old. Um, and I always used to like typing stories on Microsoft Word. I would just open a document and like type stories and my sister would read them. So that was a cool little system we had. <laughs> I mm-hmm. was the writer, she was the reader. And at the same time, I always liked video stuff. So I think throughout time, both of them just kind of combined. And I ended up being like a, f- a filmmaker. I don't know if you can even call me that at the time because I was like, I don't know, like a kid. Mm-hmm. But a lot of stuff was self-taught. Like I figured out how to edit on Windows Movie Maker just by playing around on it. I figured out how to like slice video and like, and then I also took some courses in high school that helped me become a better editor because we had that's where i learned how to use like final cut seven i think it was and i really loved that class we had a it was called cast and we had a film festival every year and it was like my favorite event of the year like other people you know they have like their sports tournaments and stuff for me i was just all year looking forward to the film festival um 
I was acting also in high school. Thank you. <laughs> I was <laughs> acting in high school, but not as much. So you know those like commercials at the time they were like, Oh, do you want to be the next Selena Gomez? Blah blah blah. <laughs> you can audition for Disney. I was interested in acting, but I had no idea how to get it. Like I didn't know that like normal everyday people could start acting and become actors. I thought like yeah. actors just spawned on this earth and you either like were someone that was on TV and acting or you weren't. But I heard this commercial on TV and I was like, wait a minute, I can become I can be an actor like I from here, but whatever. So I had inquired, like I went to some I went to some lecture. I don't even know what it was called, but it was a scam. I think mm-hmm. a lot of actors start out falling for a scam, but it was basically yeah. just like they were, they were they got a bunch of like people and their children and were trying to sell them like this expensive course and saying that it would they would get connections and all this stuff from it, but it wasn't it was like really sketchy and weird. Um but from there I found legitimate acting classes and I did some acting when I was um in high school and I was auditioning for stuff, but I wasn't really in the right headspace to be an actor i just i really just had no idea what i was doing but at the same time i was having fun but at the same time it was all really scary and different mm-hmm. and I, did, I had no idea what i was doing and i didn't have any guidance because i didn't know anybody at all who had who does auditions or any type of acting experience um i never even i don't even think i went to i went to like one school play in my entire life and i didn't mm-hmm. think that, that was anything i was capable of doing I just thought people, some people were just born with it. It didn't like really click for me that that's a skill you can learn. So even when I was in my acting classes in high, when I was a teenager, I wasn't good and other kids in the class were good. So I was like, oh, this just isn't for me. I'm just not good at this. Um, but I booked my first role when I was 15. I'm talking a lot. I booked my no, first role. No, keep talking. I'm good at, it's I'm kind of like a long this. story because everything kind of like intertwined to me ending up in film school. Yeah. So I booked my first role when I was 15. I was on set on a professional set for the first time. It was like a a new media series. Um, I never saw the finished product, but I had one line. I was like the role of student. I just had one line, but I was on set and I'm like, oh my God, like this is real. Like people do this and like, this is real. Like you can work on set. And I'm like, this is a real workplace. I'm going to work here. At the time, I wasn't really thinking of being like an actor. I was just thinking mm-hmm. like, all these people have jobs. Like I can work here. I can work on set. I like this energy. I like this atmosphere. So I went, that's what, that's how I ended up in film school. Okay. <laughs> and that's, in film school is when I really started to call myself a filmmaker. And that's basically the story of how I ended up being a filmmaker. And then I went back to acting a couple of years after that. And, and were, you, were, your, were your parents okay with the idea of you like, going to film school instead of taking yeah. the traditional road because i know like f- we're both dominicans and our uh, you know the dominican uh at least for me you know that uh hollywood's not something that's like reachable and your parents always want you to be like an architect or a lawyer or a doctor or something that you can yeah. actually get a job on something where the the path to get to like you know the I guess the um, the path to stability is more clear. Yeah, like, you know, if you're if you're a let's say you work in the medical field, you know that you have to go to school and then from school you get a job and then you start this position and then you work your way mm-hmm. up if you want to. Um, and then you know, that's a lot easier. I think a lot of like children of immigrants or immigrant families yeah. are pushed. It doesn't even matter where you're from. It's just like an immigrant thing. I know. I know that a lot of people are like pushed to go a route that's a lot more safe, safe, promising, and predictable. And, I guess yeah, and stable. Yeah, but luckily, I my parents are always really supportive and like no oh, good. Even though they didn't know anything about the industry, my dad is very much a follow your dreams type of person. Aww, that's <laughs> and so I know I feel really lucky. I feel really lucky because I meet like sometimes like you know I talk to friends who are also artists and their parents they don't support them at all or they don't because they don't understand what they're doing they don't really support it or don't agree with it Mm -hmm. or they just think that it's like a phase or a hobby um but luckily i've had at least the emotional support from my parents and that's i don't know yeah i feel lucky (laughs) and sometimes i'm just like 
why did you let me go to film school? I should just, <laughs> you know, but no, I'm actually really grateful that I've always had that support for my entire family, not just my parents. Like I, my, I've had so many shoots in my house where I'm asking everybody, like, can you guys be quiet? Cause we're filming. Like everyone's really cool about it. So I feel lucky about that. That's amazing. And I bet that when you won your, uh, your first award right after graduating film school for what was it? The name for hit me up. What was the name of the hit film? Hit me up. That must have been like not just validation for you, but for your parents that you were in the right yeah. path. Yeah, for sure. Like I sent them a video of me accepting the award. Oh. They're very happy for me, and yeah, those moments feel really cool. That's that's definitely feel validating. Um, now I'm in this place where I'm trying to keep going without that validation. Yeah, because I feel like I got the validation like really quick. As soon as I finished with school, I was I was kind of being rewarded for stuff and. Things have since slowed down, especially because of the, you know, we have a whole mm -hmm. pandemic, which like shut down the world for a second. And I tried to, to just keep the same energy of like yeah. creating this because I love it and I don't need, I don't need like, you know, an award or even people to, like, I don't need a thumbs up from anybody. Just do it because you like it. And that's it. And Exactly. Do you feel like um, going to uh, film school was worth it? Or now that you've been at it for a while, you feel like I uh, didn't have to go to film school? Um, um, you mean like for other people? Like if I would advise it to other people? Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, you definitely don't have to go to film school to be a filmmaker. Um especially because there's so much information out there right now yeah. on YouTube. And I feel like film school helped me um, with just be, be in practice of creating and film school forces you to be accountable and actually finish your projects because you're not, you're getting, you know, it's a, it's an assignment you have to submit at the end of the semester. Yeah. Whereas if you're, if you don't have that structure of school, it's easy to just like, have an idea, start it, drop it, which I've done a lot of since I finished school. <laughs> um, so it holds you accountable. It forces you to like, be, be creative and like um, have deadlines for your, for your projects. And um, it puts you out there in the field. You know, when I was in school, I was on set every weekend, all semester. Like I didn't, I don't even think I partied on the weekends. I mean, I've had parties at the end of the semester here and there, but we were always on set. And for us, for me, that was a party. I loved being on set. Cause it's just like you and your friends, you're making a movie, everyone's learning. Every, it's, it's still that learning environment. So everyone's like very forgiving of each other. Everyone's supportive of each other. I don't know if all schools are like that, but the school I went to was like that. Um, what was this school, Montclair? Yeah, I went to Montclair. I went to Montclair okay. State University. They have the BFA filmmaking program there. Mm -hmm. I felt like film school was a little too long. Like I was over it after two and a half <laughs> years, three years. I was like, okay. I was like, all right. I know, I <laughs> but feel because like... it's a university, so it's a four-year program. Yeah. But That's why I was like- A year, I think it's, a year could be a good enough time for me. Yeah, least. yeah, a year or two. Cause you still have to like, you grow a lot and especially like, you'll do one project and you the mistakes teach you stuff. And then so when you're, producing or directing again, you're like, okay, now I know how long it takes to film a scene like this, or you just learn from your mistakes. So I, when I was in school, I was able to direct, I say it was supposed to be four times, but it was really like three. Cause the first time it was just me and a camera and my cousin, mm -hmm. but other times I had like, like a film crew and actors from outside school. So I was able to direct three times. And by the, by the time I made my thesis film, I felt like I really knew what I was doing and I felt a lot more prepared and comfortable on set, comfortable being the director yeah. um, than I was the first time I did it. Good. And do you feel like you've evolved a lot more? Like what have you learned so far from 18 year old Michelle freshman at Montclair to now? What has been <laughs> the biggest lessons that you've learned? There's okay. Let's there's a there's a couple. Let me try to put them into words. Let me just pull out one of my journals. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple. One of the lessons is that to stop being perfectionist because I realized that I'm very. I love I love movies so much that 
something that inspires me in a movie, I I would judge my own work. I, I compare my own work to the movies that I love, which I shouldn't do. Yeah. Because I'm not at that level as those people who created that. And so it's hard for me to enjoy my own work because my standards are so high. Mm -hmm. um, so have you ever seen that, that like meme? It's not even a meme, but it's like a post and someone was talking about the Simpsons, like how they started off. It was like, this is what the Simpsons looks like in like the eighties or nineties versus what they look like now. And it was just like a vast difference. And it shows you that like stuff that's really good always starts out like kind of it evolves. So nothing yeah. is going to be amazing in the beginning. So I try to tell myself like, not to critique my own work as hard and just to, to create for the joy of it. And I'm going to see growth over time. And like, even if I don't think that something is really good, some, someone else might see it and like really enjoy it. So Sounds I'm trying, I, I'm in this place now where I want to create from a place of joy and inspiration instead of just, um, wanting cr to create something that's like really good and moving and inspiring to others, you know, because that is not the reason that we do it. I mean, I think artists, we want our work to be enjoyed, but if you make it so much about other people's enjoyment, then it's it like drains you because yeah. then you're like a people pleasing artist. And that's exactly. And you're just trying to please everyone and you can't please the whole world. Yeah. So definitely one of the lessons I've learned is just to take it easy on myself and really just get over myself, like get over yourself. Like, so what if you make something and it's not that good? Like, so what? Who do you think you are? I know. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm else? in the same space where I just want to create out of just, cause I want to be creative and just like put fun stuff out in the world. Not because I yeah. want to entertain or make millions of dollars. I mean, the do I millions mean, of dollars will be nice, but I just want to create stuff that makes me happy, which is why I created the, I started doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. so, I yeah. You're always, you're always like putting yourself out there. And I really respect that about you that you're always, like, I feel like you're very unstoppable. Like you're always, oh, thank you. like, you're always moving and you're always creating. And I love that. Like, you don't, you don't hesitate so much. I think. I feel like I, uh, Maybe or that's that I know of, right? Yeah. Because I only see what I see. I don't know what's going on in your life. Yeah, I feel like that's... Uh, you're not the only one that said that, but I feel sometimes like I hesitate to do stuff, but I don't know. I, I guess, guess. Like we're not seeing it because we're not... Yeah. We don't, maybe we don't realize how much time passes between you putting out content, but mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always seeing you like on Instagram, <laughs> like you always putting out new episodes of stuff, and I, I love that because that's how you... That's how you sculpt yourself as an artist. It's just but yeah, you know, keep creating, and obviously, like we all have to take breaks and stuff like that. But I know. Okay, so you are an actor and a director. This is a two-part question. As an actor, what type of work do you want to be? Do you want to do like what type of movies do you want to do? And as a writer director, what type of work do you want to create? Um. I have so many different fascinations that I don't think there's a specific genre that I want to stick to. Um, because when I was in school, I made like a comedy film and I'm like, well, I'm a funny person now. I'm just like, I'm... <laughs> but then after that, I made like a drama and then I realized that I like both and I don't like one more than the other. As an actor, I would love to be on a, like a sci-fi fantasy set where just... Mm -hmm. I just would love to do something otherworldly where, like, my character gets dressed up in something I would never wear as Michelle. Like Game of Thrones. Like, Game of Thrones, exactly. <laughs> uh, I love, like, stuff like that. Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, like, things like that. Like, otherworldly things that they just take you to another place. And it's like, you, there's only so many times in life that you get to do something like that. I mean, like, you can do it by, like, cosplaying or something. But I also like immersing myself, like, into characters. Yeah. So I would love to do something sci-fi fantasy related as an actor. Um, and as a writer director, to be honest, it's whatever's inspiring me at the time. <laughs> I think I, I would love to do a comedy just because they're so fun. Like when you're mm -hmm. on set and like, 
everyone's holding in their laughter while while you're rolling and then the second you like yell cut everybody's cracking up like those make such good memories and um what else i like really big stories i don't know like you know how let me think of an example i would just love to create a, maybe like a sci-fi fantasy world if we want to go back to that genre but just like with more people of color in it and um just tell different different stories than what we're used to seeing and like i would love to shoot a film on an island or or a yeah. film that takes place kind of multiculturally where you have like a character who like like us like we're just here we live in new york but then we also have so much history in this other place so maybe like a character going back home and like visiting their roots and throw some sci-fi in there the family has magic <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah i would love to create so, something like that or any anything we're just i don't know that celebrates life and celebrates um just a mix of different cultures and yeah, yeah. i love that and what has been your the best advice you've received so far? There's, okay, I remember one time when I was in school, we actually had uh, a guest visitor. And mm. his, oh my gosh, I'm blanking out on his name, but he's the guy who wrote Precious, the movie. Oh, uh, the screenwriter of Precious. And he like kind of won an Oscar and everything. So it was kind of like a big deal when he came to our campus because we usually don't have people like that come come to visit us at my school. So, um, I think I asked him like, what is something that you've learned or something? And mm -hmm. he was like, growth is pain. And uh, like, it sounds kind of depressing, but at the same time, it's true. Like, I feel like, I feel like you just learn so much during your more difficult times than you do when things are going smoothly or when everything's going great. Um, and I don't know if that's exactly what he meant, but I was like, I really feel that what he's saying, because it's the harder times that bring out these beautiful parts of you. Yeah. Like they make you more empathetic. They make you stronger. They make you wiser. So I guess it's just like a reminder, like when you're going through really rough times that you're growing and that yeah that you're growing and it's just it's it's affecting it's building your character i guess and like not not everything bad happens like just for no reason at all i do think that there's some bad some bad things are not justified but yeah at the same time yeah it's the harder times that are going to make you a better person and a better artist i think i love that okay sorry so i, I was sad but... no that's great advice i forgot i don't know who um i'm afraid to like let me see. Let me who who wrote. I'll I'll find it when I'm editing. <laughs> okay, I have a little game for us to play. It's uh, cool. this or that or um. Will you, it's it's a my version of will you rather? <laughs> oh okay, I love. Will We're you gonna rather. call it this or that. Okay. Okay. So okay. I'm going to pay. I'm scared for some reason. <laughs> no, it's only I. It's only fifteen. It's like 15 questions. It'll be okay. fun. Okay. Movies or live theater? Movies. Yeah, I like movies too. I love movies. I just, they make me cry. I mean, theater makes me cry too, but movies, they just do, th they're just so otherworldly. They're just so cool. I know. I saw Common is on, in the play right now. I forgot the name of the play, but I went to see it. It was okay. He's not that good. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I think that we were just talking about it because I think in theater, you know, he's done movies and he looks fine on movies, but in theater you have to be bigger. And mm. I feel like someone told him to just be be more, do more, not mm. be so subtle. And he just he was doing the most. went with it. Anyways, okay, <laughs> win an Oscar or direct a movie that makes a billion dollars. Hmm. I mean, damn, um, I could do a lot with a billion dollars. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> the, movie, another movie. <laughs> the movie makes a billion dollars. And I guess maybe if you're the director, producer, you get a cut from that or win the Oscar. Well, I feel like an Oscar would open up opportunities for you to keep working. 
but not necessarily. Yeah, really, yeah it doesn't. That's true. It's not always. Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna go with the billion dollars. I'll eat yeah, some me too. Cocktail shrimp. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, make I'll make another movie. Exactly. All right. So do nudity or gain a hundred pounds for a roll. I'll do nudity. Really? Yeah. I'll gain the weight. Yeah, but I feel like if you gain a hundred, if I, I feel like if I were to gain a hundred pounds, it wouldn't be in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, and I like feeling very, like I like when my body feels very free. Mm-hmm. I like to feel like I could do a cartwheel. I can't do a cartwheel, but I like to feel like I could. <laughs> yeah. Um, I get it. And also, it's just like I'm gonna die. Like you know, like it's just the body. Yeah. I'm actually very sh- like mo- like I'm shy kind of. Like, I feel like I'm more on the modest side. Like, I'm actually not somebody... I'm not super comfortable, like, being naked or, like, I don't even like bikinis that are too showy. Mm -hmm. But if the scene... If it was appropriate for the scene, you know, I'll do it. I get it. I'll wait. I'll I'll gain the weight and just have the studio pay for me to lose it later. (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) All right. Will you move to L.A. or you're making it in New York? Would I move to L.A. or make it in New York? You know, I don't want to be in the same place for the rest of my life, but I love, I like, I like New York better, I think. So I'm going to pick New York. Even same. though L.A. is so sunny, but I like New York. I know. Well, New York has all the four seasons. New- L.A. only has one season. That's true. And I okay, love so, autumn. Yeah, I know. Autumn and spring are my favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay, so will you direct a sex scene or in a film or be in a sex scene? I'll do either. <laughs> no, you I already did go. the first one. I already did the first one. Oh, you, like, you, you have? Yeah, you have yeah, yeah they were like na- Yeah, for one of my student films, but like it wasn't actually. You know what? Maybe I can't say that I did because it wasn't really like a full sex scene. It was kind yeah. of just like the lead up to like. Uh, actors. Okay. Yeah, it was like a scene where they were like both drunk and like they were like about to hook up, but it wasn't an actual thing. Um, I guess I'll direct it. I feel like I'll be good at directing that because I'm very romantic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get. I think I know what you're gonna say for this one. Well, get twenty millions to be in a movie, or get twenty millions to make the movie you, you've always wanted to make, like your baby. Oh damn! To make to make it to make it. Yeah. yeah. Even though, isn't it like 20 million? Like, isn't that considered low budget these days? Cause... Yeah, I know it is. It's like an but, indie. An indie is 20 million. It just makes me think of like, if I had $20 million to make a movie, I would literally just employ all of my friends and like people who I really admire and respect and have wanted to work with. And you know how you exactly. meet people and you're just like, oh my God, I want to do things with you. I want to create with you. Yeah. And I want to see you thriving too. So I'm just imagining all my favorite people like working together and like we're all out here. And I feel like that's more power than just being in the movie as an actor. So yeah, I agree. Okay, so make make or be in a movie on location. So somewhere outside of Hollywood, like a tropical island, another country, or just film everything on a soundstage. Uh, I would love to travel for work. So me too. That's like one of my goals, just to like make movies that are located in like a tropical island so i could just go there <laughs> yeah i would love that and you're getting paid too and they're flying you yeah. out and you know, i know place different I place know. as long as it's like something nice not ohio <laughs> so Dude, boring, yeah like... take me somewhere let's go to new oh, zealand i know <laughs> okay so you have to pick one netflix disney Disney Plus, HBO, or Amazon Prime? HBO. Well, I don't know. They're going through some changes. But I know. They've right been canceling now, everything. I'm going to say HBO because they have a lot of like artistic stuff on there. I'm going to stick with Netflix. Marvel or DC? DC. <laughs> have you seen Megan? Have I seen what? Megan, the movie with the. Oh, the one with the little. No. Is that. Is she? Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm like, is No, I'm scared of horror movies. Okay, well, I'll skip this one then. (laughs) Okay. 
Okay, a good comedy film or a good drama? Comedy. Comedy. Because not there's so many good dramas, but there's not a lot of good comedy. So I really appreciate when a good comedy comes out. Yeah, that's true. Be in a Marvel film or be in the remake of Harry Potter? Uh, Harry Potter all day. I just came it's back. It's a remake, though. Movie. It might not be good. It's a remake. <gasps> a remake. So, like, they're... Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like a spin-off type of situation. No, it's the remake of like. No, because Harry if Potter. I'm in a remake of Harry Potter or like Avatar: The Last Airbender or something, and it's not good, I would cancel myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll do the Harry Potter one just because I get to wear the the robes or something yeah. like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Being a reality TV show or being a sitcom that only lasts one season. Reality TV show or sitcom that lasts one season? Yeah. The reality TV show is going to, you know, it's probably going to have like 10 seasons. Oh, this go sitcom... the sitcom. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I want to do reality TV. Okay. Well, this one's, this one's similar to that one, actually. So be part of a remake or spinoff of one of your favorite shows or be part of an original show that might get canceled. It's, it, it might. We don't know if it's going to get canceled. But there's a chance. If it's on HBO, especially. <laughs> I know, right? If it's on any streaming service, honestly. Yeah. Um, a spinoff of my favorite show. Mm-hmm. But what are my favorite shows already done? They're not filming anymore. Oh, you said a spinoff. It's yeah. like okay, one so, of the characters okay, so from that show has his, his or her own show now based on that character. And this is a new story based on that world so it already has a building audience so okay. i think i'm gonna go with the original just because yeah the the only show that i could think of that i would have wanted to be on a spin-off of was like maybe like the man don't make fun of me maybe like the vampire diaries but they already have two spin-offs um and i love the originals but i don't like legacies and i'm i don't know how they can make up for legacies now so no, oh, I've Sorry. never seen that show. <laughs> oh, what else? I mean, I love Game of Thrones. Every yeah, Ooh, that's on the dragon. Yeah, I do, yeah, do want to go with the spinoff. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go with the spinoff. I'm gonna go with the spinoff. Okay, you no know, spinoff. Okay, that's that's the end of my uh, this or that. Hold on, let me do this. I think I gave like the longest answers. Huh? I think I gave like the longest answers instead of just like can... one. I'm like, well. I know. Let Was me write thumbnail? this whole essay. Is that for the... Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so my final question is, if you could go back to high school, Michelle, what would, you, what would be the one thing that you would tell her never to let go of? Never to let go of? Yeah. Um, I guess... Hope? <laughs> Man, don't hope do it. Hope. <laughs> I know. I like, I know. Especially in this industry, you have to have hope. Don't lose hope that, you know, there's good things ahead, even when it doesn't seem like it. I love that. Wait, hold on. This is for you. Yeah, exactly. What about you? I'm curious. What would your, what would your answer be? Oh, never to let go. Uh, oh. oh, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> what would I never let go of? I guess hope. No, not hope. I think hope. Maybe hope is the problem, honestly. I know. It's because we're, like, holding on to hope. No, I feel holding like... Holding on to these dreams for dear life. No, you know what? I will tell myself never to let go of my dreams because that dream has taken me to a lot of different places. And it have, it have uh, helped me meet amazing people like you and other people that I probably wouldn't have met if I wasn't chasing this dream. So I will tell myself... Don't let go of your dreams. Aw, that's so well, nice. That's, that's I it. That, uh, that's the end of this episode. Thank you so much, Michelle. Wait, Thank you for oh, making me feel important by asking me questions. <laughs> You're always important in my book, Michelle. <laughs> thank you. This was so nice. So thank I you. This, I, this is the first, I think this might be the first episode because you were the episode first person one. I interview. So... I love it. I'm honored, honestly. 
So follow Michelle. What's your Instagram? My Instagram right now is Michelle with two L's. And then I crushed my last name to make it fit. So it's M T I N E Z. You know what? I'll just I'll just insert it somewhere. <laughs> Thanks. It'll probably change because my identity changes every couple of years and every brand. But <laughs> you evolve. You grow and evolve and you change. <laughs> So thank you so much, Michelle. I love you so much. And I'm so excited for your journey. And I hope that in a year we're going to, we're going to do it again. You've seen that interview on Vogue with uh, Billie Eilish. They do the same interview every year. We can do that every year. I know. We'll check in. I'll be like, one thing I won't let go of. It's my bank account. (laughs) My bank account. (laughs) <laughs> my passwords i know exactly i had to start writing them down okay well thank you so much michelle i'll see you, you and i'll see everybody soon peace Bye. out y'all